project between two barriers has already been presented in several universities of Spain and Portugal. We have favorable reviews from Oxford and Cambridge, among many others. But the Basque academic circles, in particular the Center of Basque Studies at the University of Deusto, remain deaf to our offers to cooperate. Our project has proven that all the pre-Roman Spain spoke languages highly similar to the Basque. So it looks like it's difficult to understand the Basque professors. But only if you don't know anything about the horrible academic paradigm of these days. The project Between Two Barriers uh, has been presented in, at the universities of uh, Castellón, uh, Valencia, Granada, Lis Lisboa, uh, Warsaw and Belize. The only place where it uh, still uh, has no access seems to be uh, universities of the uh, Basque country. For some reason, uh, Basque people are not going to uh, consider uh, the fact that the ancient Spain used to speak uh, Basque, Basque language all over. Uh, even today you will find a huge number of uh, Basque, clear, uh, Basque uh, toponyms of clear Basque uh, etymology. For example, in Andalusia, uh, they are not uh, going to consider the fact that uh, Basque language uh, has clear uh, Catalan uh, origin and belongs to the Catalan family. Uh, in particular, uh, they are not going to uh, take into account the list of the uh, Basque-Georgian correspondences uh, that uh, has been provided by the project between two barriers. And finally, they are not going to consider the fact that Madrid uh, is a Basque word. What it means, that the, the Spain used to, used, to, used to speak Basque language all over, uh, is very easy to understand. It changes not only the, the whole Spanish history, it changes the uh, modern uh, social, historical uh, relations between, with, with, within uh, Spain itself. But that's a historical truth. You can uh, argument it, you can, you, you can provide your argument, arguments, you can argue, you can uh, discuss it, but you can never ignore it. But we'll go out on a limb and prove right in your face the Basque origin of the name of Madrid. From one hand, it will demonstrate the solidity of our project. From the other one, it will put questions that have no answers, both to Madrid and to the Basque people. The first to have noticed the word Madaridi in the meaning of pear garden in the Basque dictionary was a Spanish professor Rodrigo Mora from Soria. In his article he also quoted the Spanish poet of the 13th century Gonzalo Berceo, who witnessed that in his days the Madrid region spoke Basque language. So, to put a legitimate end to this dizzy hypothesis, we need to prove that the outskirts of Madrid used to be full of pear gardens. If you search for the word perales, which is pear gardens in Spanish, in Google Maps, you'll see the biggest concentration of this toponym exactly around Madrid. Let's go there and find all those Madrid perales that prove the Basque origin of the Spanish capital, which many Basque people simply hate. Recall the comedy Eight Catalan Surnames, for example. ¿Y ahora qué? ¿Por qué para aquí? ¿Por qué hemos llegado a Madrid? A Madrid, pero ¿por qué? ¿Por qué para en Madrid? Vamos a ver, porque hay que cambiar de tren, que es un trasbordo. Quieto ahí, nada de transbordaciones. Un vasco como Dios manda no pisa Madrid. ¿Y usted qué mira? ¿Es que nunca ha visto un vasco con fundamentos o qué? Madrid pays with the same dislike, although madrileños seem to be the same Basque people who forgot their native language and started speaking the vulgar Latin, known today as Spanish language. The first Perales is found west to Madrid. It's Villa Nueva de Perales that is situated on the river with the same name, Perales. And yes, it is close to Madrid, in about 20 kilometers. Previously there used to be another Perales here, Perales de Milla, but today it's forgotten even in the neighboring town of Quijorna. Meanwhile we go for the second Perales, which is in Getafe, virtually Madrid's suburb. Here it is under the name of Perales del Rio, and yes, again very next to the capital. The third Perales, Perales de Tajunia, lies in the same 20 to 25 kilometers 
southeast from Madrid in the direction of Tarancón. So, Madrid indeed is surrounded by toponyms that bear the name of Perales, Pear Gardens, which fully corresponds to the Basque word Madaridi in the meaning of Pear Garden. There's no need to say that Madaridi in fact is a Georgian toponym Madareti, meaning land of Madari, while Madari is Pear in Basque language. Madrileños, you are Basques. But what about Catalonians? The most terrible is that the Spanish etymologists even don't think about looking for the name's origin in the Basque dictionary. Meanwhile, it contains the marvelous Catalog word in the meaning of sheep among others. And the name of Barcelona, to be sincere, also has very high chances to be a derivation from the Basque word Bartha, which is beach, the tree. If we decide to choose a cultural symbol of the Basque country, the highest chances to occupy the throne would belong to the accordion player and multi-instrumentalist from Bilbao named Kepa Junquera. He is not just an outstanding composer and arranger, he is also a historiographer of the Basque music, who gives us a possibility to plunge into the ancient times, coming to know aesthetics of the long gone years. <laughs> Kepa, thanks a lot for the possibility of this interview. Could you please tell us about the main characteristics of what is known in the world as Basque music? Well, first of all, I want to thank you for your interest in our culture, in our music, in our people, in our customs. First of all, many thanks for your interest to our culture. It's really pleasant. As for me, I was introduced to the Basque music by my grandfather, who played pandereta, and my mother, who danced with a partner that played the traditional alboca instrument. And from the very birth, which took place under dictatorship in 1965, I had the luck to listen to these sounds. It was impossible to hear such music at school. Neither was it broadcast on radio. Everything was hidden underground, but I was lucky. At school they didn't want to call me Kepa. Instead they called me Pedro. So you can imagine, if you didn't have a chance even to be called with your own Basque name, how difficult the access to Basque language and Basque music was. When I discovered this music, it conquered my heart, first of all, rhythmically. This music is very rhythmical, very joyful. We didn't have neither disc player nor tape recorder at home back then. We even didn't have a car. And in this desert, I was taken by the rhythm of this music. Rhythm and energy. I was eight or nine years old, and I was able to value these feelings many years after that. Creo que la península ibérica en general, por encima de las fronteras, que cada uno además tiene, se puede puede trazar. Despite that the Pyrenaic Peninsula is drawn with borders all over, there is a kind of generalized sound, common for all. And that's where the recognizability starts. For example, I always have an accordion and pandereta by my side. And for many friends all over the world, this means association with the place I come from. Pues ya nos ubican en el mundo, ¿no? Eso es algo muy bonito. Es cuando, como cuando te escuchas una guitarra y te y la ubicas en en el sur de España, ¿no? En el sur de la península. The interview with Kepa took place before his joint musical and sports performance with Iñaki Perurena, the strongest Basque who is the champion in the national sports called Harry Hasotze, 
Lifting of Stones. Kepa played various musical instruments, while Inyaki positioned himself as actor, poet, singer and multi-talented representative of Basque nation. There are people like us who are professionals not in terms of earning money out of it, but in terms of plunging into it completely. Thanks to this, we can record albums and do tours. In my creativity process, I'm basing exactly on those impulses that I experienced in my life. Yo, por supuesto, cuando empecé a tocar a Tigrisa, me aprendí más o menos lo que, lo que se tocaba. Y, y luego, como estaba en un grupo I know de... well what had been done before me and tried to use the achievements of other people in my work, but always with contributing something on my own. Lo que habían hecho otros, pero a mí me apetecía poder aportar algo, ¿no? This creative necessity is where ideas and melodies are born from. Then I started looking at the world more broadly and absorb ideas of people who are not part of my closest environment, trying to inculcate it into my work. I like to do such stuff. In winter, I'm recording a disc with a Catalonian harpist where there will be music from all three Catalonian provinces, Catalonia itself, Valencia and Baleares, as well as from L'Alger in Sardinia. Then there will be another project with four fellow accordion players, a guy from Finland, a guy from Ireland, two Italians and myself. Tell us about your cooperation with Changos Pasuk, the Argentinian Ukrainian, whom we presented in Piazzolla has always been to me the greatest composer of the 20th century. And when I started to discover all that explosion of the Latin American music, I found Chamamé, Raúl Barbosa and Changos Pasuk. 
Y bueno, surgió ese proyecto, lo titulamos. We called the project Sea of Bellows, where we played his themes and mine. And that was a great experience and great honor for me. Yo no pretendía tocar chamamé y él tampoco pretendía tocar un fandango como yo, ¿no? I didn't pretend to play chamamé like chango, he didn't pretend to play fandango like me. El poder, eh, no sé, porque ellos tienen un, tienen un pulso que es muy difícil, yo no, no lo podría copiar, me perdería, o sea, no, no, no sé, por eso yo intento partir de lo que tengo alrededor y sí me interesan esos proyectos, pero... I like dances tanto, like that very much. Eh, He has quite a complicated style. It would be very difficult to copy him. You'll inevitably lose something. Extraordinario y y luego hay que oírlo, ¿no? Hay que esa cadencia que tiene el chamamé y luego toda la historia, ¿no? Que que te da envidia el no poder haberla vivido un poco más de primera mano, ¿no? I like the projects where people contribute something on their own. Django is a wonderful musician and it's great to be acquainted with the chamame at first hand. But he also knows our music, our rhythms. He knows about the music that had been hidden during the dictatorship and then mayor, mejor, peor, todo eso no no está en en mi cabeza, en mi cabeza creativa. Better, worse, more, less. I don't have this stuff on my mind. Mejor ni peor ni ni nada, ni más guapa ni más fea. If a person has anything to tell or better to do, his value is hard to calculate. Besar algo para mí eso tiene un valor incalculable para mí por encima de los estereotipos de las cosas que van formando. Es decir. Besides, I don't have such stereotypes as jazz, rock, pop, electronic music. People say that I'm playing folk, but in fact I'm playing the music of 21st century, which is obliged to include jazz, rock and all. The world to me exists to facilitate the things, and borders impede this.
madre tiene 85 años. El otro día tocó la pandereta, ¿no? Yo toco mejor la pandereta que mi madre, pero yo tengo una jerarquía hacia ella. My mother is 85 and she plays pandereta. I played it too, but it will never come to my mind to say that I'm better than her. Eso ya te he superado, no, no, eso no me sale. No me diría. Entonces yo creo en la jerarquía de las Is the epoch's hierarchy. Muchísimo valor. Es decir, hay muchos jóvenes ahora que se pasan esa The young people often strive to get a lot without paying tribute to the previous generation. A los que vienen antes. Entonces, bueno, esperemos que seguro que nos encontraremos otra vez. Sí, claro. Y, y, y gracias a vosotros por Thank you for coming from such a distant land. A otras culturas que yo creo que, que es muy interesante y y habla muy bien de vosotros de de Sometimes you don't get such attention from people who live next to you. Y muchas veces aquí gente que que está muy cerca no no tiene ningún interés ni ninguna emoción. Eso para mí es it's life. The musicality of Basque people, in particular, made Bilbao one of the European centers of tango, where festivals are held regularly. But Basque people have no idea that the word tango, the etymology of which has been a matter of eternal disputes, comes from the Basque land too. In the Basque dictionary of Coldo Michelena, tango is translated as pulse. And the word structure is utterly Basque too, since it contains the Basque trademark genitive suffix go. <laughs> Meanwhile, we get back from dances and linguistics to gastronomy in order to present you the best Basque products in the trademark basket of Between Two Barriers project. The central element of the Basque food basket definitely is going to be Idiasabal cheese, smoked and white. It naturally is followed by the Chacolí wine. We have chosen the sweet wine, sweet Chacolí, produced by Chomine Chanis. Uh, the other bodegas uh, don't, don't make sweet wines. If you want some real Basque cider, you need to go to Hernani, which is next to San Sebastián, where you'll, you will be offered Alzueta or Bediciartua or anything else with residue as it should be in a real good cider. And of course, Guindilla de Ibarra, delicious small green pepper that has its own appellation, in, uh, which is protected by its own appellation in Spain. For dessert, unbelievable trademark Basque sweets produced by Eduardo Biscarra in his lab in Bilbao. Incho salsa, that's the name of the Basque nut cream offered on Christmas, while Gasta Tufax, that's unbelievable cheese truffles. Now an exciting story about the chimichurri sauce. Uh, chimichurri means not only sauce for meat, but also the meat itself. The fried meat is known as chimichurri, for example, in Costa Rica. Uh, chimichurri is a clear, Catalan, Georgian adjective made out of the chim some uh, chimicha or chimiche 
uh, route. You will find an, uh, to a toponym Chimiche here in the Basque country and you will find also the word Chimiche in the Georgian dictionary where it means uh, the straw left on the field of the, after the harvest is picked. Uh, chimichuri thus is a clear adjective derivation out of this um, chimicha noun, uh, meaning uh, belonging to chimicha. For example, meat, meat that relates to, to the straw, it is fried up. Uh, so, uh, first uh, the word chimichuri uh, obtained this meaning, uh, the meaning of the fried meat. Under, under, under which it is known in Costa Rica and only after that the meaning was shifted onto the sauce in Argentina. So Argentina sauce, Costa Rica fried meat, but the etymo etymological origin of the word chimichurri goes to Georgia. That was our account of the obvious and hidden gems of the Basque country. Sure, there has been left a lot for you to discover on your own. Meanwhile, we leave with this ancientest land of Spain and head to as beautiful Cantabria.